Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to override a D365 jump ref on a base Microsoft method. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about how you can use the view details functionality to drill into a related form. That's the blue text that you see on forms. Um, it's really helpful. You, you click on it, it takes you to the related form. You can create a new record, edit that record, or view details about a related record. Then in the last video, we talked about how you can actually override that blue text functionality to add your own functionality to navigate to maybe a different form, pass a different parameter in it, maybe stop the blue text altogether, um, whatever you need to, um, you can do that directly using that jump ref method instead of using table relations and a form ref. Um, but then in this last video, I want to talk about how to override that jump ref, and jump ref method in a base Microsoft form. So in a base Microsoft form, you're not able to to modify the code directly on the form. So instead you need to use chain of command or a table uh, or an event handler to add the code to that form and add the um, jump ref. You also need to register that method. So let's start with an example and then we'll go through it and I'll show you the code. So in this example, I'm on the all customers form. And then if I drill into this customer form, we're actually gonna add a custom field. I added this field called store number, um, pretending like maybe this customer has a default store that they regularly have to shop. I don't know if that's a real example or not, um, but let's make it so we can override this jump ref functionality and have it navigate somewhere else. In this case, um, instead of navigating to the main store setup form, which is what the relation would do for you, I actually had it navigate to the store hours form. Um, maybe you wanna be able to quickly check out what those store hours are, I don't know. Um, again, this is just an example I made up for uh, demonstrating how to do this. So let's go through each one of those pieces. So the first thing I did was I searched Search for cus table in the application explorer. I found cus table and then I right clicked on that cus table and I created an extension. I guess before that I created a new um, project that hopefully you know how to do by now. Otherwise, check out my other video on how to create a project. Definitely make sure that um, the properties are set with your custom model and the synchronized database is set to true. Um, so you're gonna right click on this table, say create extension. That'll create a new extension to this cus table or on that extension that's already there and say add to project. After doing that, go ahead and open the table up. In this case, I right clicked on fields and said new string and I added a new string called tut store ID. Tut is short for tutorial. I also set the extended data type to retail store ID um, so that it matches the same extended data type used by um, the retail store table, which is the main table where stores are defined. I did, just to point out, um, if we look at that extended data type, retail store ID, it actually already has a table relation to retail store table and retail store table has a form reference to the store. And so what this means is that um, this jump ref functionality will already work um, to take you to the main store. And so we're actually overriding it to do something different. So I just wanted to point that out. So after we've added the, the new field, go ahead and build and compile your solution then we need to modify the form. So again, we'll search for cus table inside the application explorer. I'll scroll down until I find it. And then same deal, we can right click on that form and say create extension and that'll add it to our project. Or if you've got an, an existing extension, you can right click add that to the project. So I've got that one here. I can then say open to open the designer. From there, we need to go to this cus table, expand fields, and then find my new field. 
So in this case, the field is called store ID. If you don't see it here, make sure you close this form. Make sure you do a full compile first of your solution, then reopen this form designer, and then you should be able to see um, this field in the form. Once you have it, you can drag it onto this form design. In this case, I expanded tab, tab page details, tab header, tab general, upper, and then our upper group, and then expanded other information. And I went ahead and I just dragged this field into the other information group. You can add it wherever you want if you're following along, um, but that's where I added it so that I knew it would be in the general tab. All right, so um, now that I've added this form control, I can override the jump ref on it. You don't have to have a custom field to override the jump ref. You could be overriding the jump ref on any existing field, but I thought I'd show this example as I think it's a little more common. So once I'm here, I actually can't right click on methods and click override jump ref because again, I am not allowed to modify a base Microsoft Forms code. Um, I can look at it by right clicking on this uh, form and saying view code if, if I look at the base Microsoft um, form, but I can't actually modify that code. That's kind of the rules of this extension model that Microsoft set up. So instead, I need to use chain of command or an event handler to add this code. And so if you're not familiar with either of those, I recommend you look up my video and article on chain of command fundamentals and then go from there. Um, but if you are, we're just going to create a chain of command um, on the form and I'll also show how you can do this with an event handler. So I'll go ahead and, and open up my chain of command class. Um, but in your case, you can right click, say add new item to add this new class. You can select Dynamics 365 items select class and then give it a name. In my case, I called it tut, short for tutorial. And then the name of the form is called cuss table. And then I did an underscore form underscore extension. That way I'm kind of following best practice. It must end with extension, then click add. That'll create a class for you. Then you need to add the attribute at the top here. So uh, extension of form string cuss table. Uh, again, I will reference the other videos on chain of command, but this is telling the system to add all of this code to the code that exists on this form already. Um, and so really we need two, P two methods on this. I'm actually gonna start with the second one, this jump ref method. This one, I can name it whatever I want. In this case, I'm gonna call it tut store ID jump ref. That way, if I have other jump ref methods on the cuss table, they don't have the same name. I don't wanna call it just jump ref. Then the other thing of note that's different from our last video um, is I need to pass in the form control object. That way I can read the current value in that form control by calling dot value string. But then the rest is the same as the last video. We can either use a display menu item um, and this menu function class to call uh, this form, or we can use the form run method to call the form. And so in this case, maybe I'll zoom out just for a second so you can see all that code. It's also be in the article, but essentially I'm looking up a related store. I'm passing it in as a record. And normally I would call retail store table is how you, know, you would expect this to work. But just for fun, I'm gonna call a different form, the retail store hours menu item and run that one. Okay, now that I've created this method, it's just a one-off method. I haven't overridden anything. I've just written some code in a method. Now, what I actually need to do is I need to um, tell the system to call my method instead of the base jump ref method. So let's look at that. Let's break that down. There's really um, two pieces. 
or, or really, sorry, three pieces. One is I need chain of command on the init method. The init method is the method that gets called first thing when a form opens. This next call to init creates all those form controls. And it's really after all those form controls are done, that's when I need to add my couple lines of code to tell the system to call my method instead of um, the base method. So first thing I need to do is call this dot, I don't know why that uh, box is right there, this dot design dot control name. And then I use this function form control string to tell it what form control we're doing this on. I'm gonna call cuss table is the name of my form. And then I need to know the name of my control. So in this case, cuss table underscore type store ID is the name of my control. If I go back to my form design here and I look what it's named, I can see that it's named cuss table underscore store ID. I can also see it in this name property as well. So you need to make sure you're remembering that name so you can put it in the code here. Now that I've got this control in a variable called form string control, I can call form string control dot register override method. And so this is really useful when you're overriding any method on a form control, whether it be a modified method or a lookup method, or in this case, the jump ref method. We're gonna call register override method. And then what this does is we need to first tell it what is the method that we're gonna override? What it what does the base system call it? And in this case, we're gonna say it's just called jump ref. Then our next parameter is we need to tell it what is the method that should be run instead. And so we need to tell it the name of the class. And in this case, the name of the class is cuss table underscore form underscore extension. You can replace it with your name of your class. And then the second parameter of this function is we need to tell it the name of the method. So in this case, we're gonna call tut store ID jump ref. And then that's it. Um, it's smart enough to pass in this form control for us, and it's gonna call this method and call the related store hours as you saw already. So that's really it. This is my preferred way of doing it with chain of command, but you can also use a form handler. So let me open up that class um, just to show you what that would look like. You do not want to create two classes. I just created two so you could see both of them. But as you can see, I've got that code commented out right now because I don't want both of them running at the same time. But let's take a look real quick at this. So um, this method here, the second one, is actually just the same, almost. Um, I've got sto uh, tut store ID jump ref. I'm passing in a form control and form control dot value string. This is going to call the menu function. So actually I think this is exactly the same. But then what's a little different with a form handler is instead of having my attribute on the entire class, I have the attribute on um, each method that I have um, that is overriding. Uh, and so in this case, I need to tell um, the system that this it should apply to the form called cuss table and it should um, be an event handler on the initialized event type. So this is gonna get called after the uh, initialize method has run. So it's very similar to us putting it in chain of command after the init method, this is gonna get run there. And so these need to be named and set exactly as you see here. After that, we've really got the same, almost the same two lines of code. The main difference is instead of calling this dot design like we did in the other method, uh, this code is gonna actually call sender dot design, but I'm still gonna pass in the name of my form control that we need to get. I'm gonna store it in a variable called control, and then I'm gonna call register override method. I'm gonna give it the name of my uh, method to override. I'm going to give it the name of the method it should call instead. So in this case, I, I'm call, telling it to call the method on this class and the method named tut store ID jump ref. 
And then lastly, I can pass it the sender object in as the form control here. Um, and then that's it. That's how I do it with an event handler. All right, so you've learned a lot about jump refs. You've learned how to use um, a relation on a table as well as the form ref property to set it up normally. You've learned how to override the jump ref on a custom form and how to call um, another form either through the menu item functions or using the form run to call another form. And then lastly, in this video, you've learned how to do that um, on a base Microsoft method using the extension model, both either with uh, chain of command or event handlers. And so, uh, yeah, you've definitely learned a lot. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.